Welcome to the little town of Lübeck in northern Germany. I've come here today to take advantage of the rose flower bloom, as you can see here. And a lot of houses, places, flats have decorated their entranceways, their doors with nice roses. So it makes for a very picturesque, a nice vibe in combination with all these uh, cobblestone roads. And I'm going to take you along today while I'm walking through the streets. And also I'm going to talk to you about a topic that I've been trying to implement into my work in the recent years, which is how time can affect our images or more specific, specifically, how images can mature very nicely over time and become a lot more interesting than, you know, after the day they were taken. Okay, without further ado, let's get on with the video. So just a quick mention of the gear I'm using today. And usually I'm perfectly fine with just using one prime lens, which is the 50 mil in my case. But since the streets here are very narrow at times, and I'm also trying to capture more of the, the buildings, I've also brought a 28 mil lens, prime lens with me. So 28 and 50 is what I'm using and 28 mil is, for at least for my use case, wide enough for these kinds of images. So I've already taken a couple of warm-up shots, which uh, turned out great. So what do I mean by maturing images? Now the easiest example would be if you take a look at pictures from your childhood. Obviously, these images will now have a bigger impact on you than on the day they were taken or when they were developed or shot or whatever. And this is a concept that also works within the genre of um, street photography. So how can you implement this idea into street photography, travel photography, doesn't really matter. Um, but for street specifically, I personally like to actively look for elements that I put into the frame that will tell a story of that specific period of time. And the easiest thing to talk about is just having cars, cars from your current day and age uh, in, the, in the frame, which after 10 or maybe even 20 years will have a very certain look and take you back to that time and therefore have a different impact 
than on the day you were taking the image. So I've just taken a picture of uh, the church spire and one tip I can give you that I have used a couple of times in the past, um, if you want to get rid of, let's say, a long row of cars in your shot, you can do something I did and just, you will need a fairly wide angle lens, but you can basically shoot off of a reflection of a car roof and thereby eliminating a foreground that would otherwise be completely full with cars. So that's just a little tip if you ever come across a situation like this. So to put that into practice, I, for example, went to a new part of town where I live, which is a very large construction project that's still going on. And I took a couple of pictures and included landmarks in these pictures from which I knew I would be able to find them again once all the construction had finished. And then you'll have kind of a before and after. Now granted, this is of course something you can only do when you're local, when you're able to visit a certain place uh, as many times as you want, basically. And of course, it's a strong direction into documentary photography instead of uh, street photography. But nevertheless, my, in my opinion, this is all something that can then spill over into your street photography and help you to identify elements within a scene that you actually want to have there. And that, you know, small little ingredients that'll help to further emphasize the subject that you're photographing or the story that you are trying to tell. So I think by now I've gotten all the nice and colorful rose shots out of my system. <laughs> of the feeling I haven't shot anything else since I arrived here. Um, so now I'll try to focus a little bit more on different subjects. That can be people, that can be just small objects, small subjects that um, help to tell the story of the place a little better.
I do have to say that some of these inner yards along these cobblestone streets are really very beautiful, especially with uh, all the colorful flowers that you can see here at the moment. Um, but they do feel very private. So you do feel a little bit like you're intruding, if that makes sense. So I try to be very quiet, be respectful of the place, even though it's, uh, it's public. And yeah, I'm very happy about a couple of images I, I got from there. I see. That's what I'm talking about. It's uh, the stuff that fairy tales are made of. <laughs> Just beautiful. So to summarize, what I'm trying to say is especially if you've just started out with photography, then chances are you'll find a lot of your images maybe aren't as interesting as you'd hoped. But do yourself a favor and don't just batch delete them and uh, you'll be very surprised if you mature as a photographer over the years on what little kind of diamonds you can still find in images that you previously thought were basically rubbish. And yeah, it's just, it's just a, a lot of fun to go through old images and suddenly find things that do appeal to you on, on some level. If you enjoy these types of videos, then please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I am going to build this channel as time goes on and all future videos will be related to photography, to street, to travel. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and uh, click the subscribe button. Anyway, this is it for me. I am going to head back to the train station and go back home. See you all next time. Okay.